Hi everyone, and thanks for joining me on today, or this evening, or this night. I hope you all are having a good day. I've had a good day, and I want you to know that you will, if you haven't had one. You will have a good day, I promise you, or a good evening, or a good night. And you know, I just want to thank you all that has subscribed, liked, and shared, and commented. I really appreciate that. All these things, I tell you, people of God, they are really encouraging to me. And for all you all that are standing for your marriage to be restored, God is going to honor you. And I want to say this here. That's right, people of God. Don't let the enemy steal what God has given you. And you know, I want to finish up with how the enemy works i want to finish that up i'm gonna come again with part three so for all of you that haven't seen part one and part two i advise you to do that it's going to really bless you and so i want to move real quickly for everyone i'm going to go here real quick starting in joshua chapter six verses one through five and you you all are going to love this i know that this is going to really be a blessing to you all and very encouraging and really show you how you have already won the battle and how god has already given you what he's promised you just have to be the one to see it and not allow the enemy to lie to you based off of what you are seeing and so we're going to see how god is showing us that in his word and we're going to start here in chapter 6, verses 1. You all are going to love this. It tells us here in the New Living Translation Version. Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go out or in. No one was allowed to go out or in. But I want you all to listen to this part here that I'm about to say. You see, these gates, they were tightly shut, the Bible says. So the people were afraid of the Israelites. And no one was allowed to go out or in. Now these walls were very thick. They were very thick. And... If you really do a search about the, the walls that were in Jericho, the Bible says, uh, actually based off of historians, hi historians, the walls were so thick and so wide till, until a car could actually drive on top of those walls. They were just that thick. And I want you to realize, people of God, that the enemy has, just picture this. There is so much thickness or uh, scales just that thick upon some of you all's eyes and minds where you can't see how to even get in or even how to bring out your spouses or your marriage that God has given you. And I'm going to get more into that shortly, but I just want you to realize something here as we read, as I take y'all further. It's going to really bless you. Now, in verse 2, it says, But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king, and all its strong warriors. You and your fighting men shall march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark each carrying a ram's horn and on the seventh day you are to march around the town seven times with the priest blowing the horns and when you hear the priest give one long blast on the ram's horns have all the people shout as loud as they can then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town now notice this here the Lord told Joshua, I have already given you Jericho, its kings and strong warriors. 
And that's what God is saying to you. He have already given you your marriage restoration. You just don't see it yet because these scales and and this veil is so thick. It be so thick over our eyes and our minds. Why? Because of all the things you've been hearing or the bad news or the things you've been seeing. Some of you all have gotten divorce papers. All this is the thickness that is being added over your eyes. That wall is getting thicker and thicker. A layer of it is coming towards you one layer at a time. Every time you hear every time you hear this, every time you hear that, guess what? That's another layer of thickness. Another layer been added to that wall. Because I'm going to tell you, when when the king built that wall, he didn't build that wall overnight, adding thickness to it. They were, He was adding to that wall layer after layer. Each time he was doing this, he was saying, no one is going to come in and no one is going to come out. And that's what the enemy is saying about you all, you know, about or about us. He's, he's adding a layer at a time over your eyes and your mind, building this wall so you can't get in to get what's yours. And your spouse or your marriage can't come out. Your marriage restoration. So every time we hear this bad news or we get a, an attack from our spouse or something that they may have said, like, I don't love you anymore. You know, I found someone else. You know, uh, I believe she is the one and, you know, I, I, I love you, but I'm just not in love with you. Guess what? That's another layer. The enemy just putting around your mind to keep you from getting what's yours and cause you to give up. That's all it is. It's to blind you and keep you from realizing that God has already giving you restoration you just can't see it because all these things has come in and they have built up walls in your mind and veil put a veil over your eyes and scales are there and so remember this is why i tell you all your marriage is already here. God has already given it to you. You just can't see it. You just can't see it. Jesus has already done these things because he paid the price. He has reversed the curse that Adam and Eve brought forth in the earth when Adam and Eve sinned. It brought a curse. But the Bible tells us in Romans that Jesus came and reversed it. He has restored it all back, guys. You're not sitting back begging, Lord, please do this and please do that. No, he said, just receive and believe that, it, that you have already received it. Isn't that what he told us in, in Mark 11, 22, 23? He says, just believe by faith and the mountain is going to be moved. You're going to see what I've already done. The mountain is going to move out of your way. The walls is going to come down. The walls is going to come down. And people of God, if I get a little, a, 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 a little, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, bold, or if you, you find my voice picking up, please, people of God. That's just this excitement that's coming out in me. <clears throat> so I pray that it's not an offense to you all. You know, I, I try to be gentle and everything, but sometimes I can get so passionate in what I'm saying because I'm speaking from my heart. I'm speaking from what I know is the truth. And so if I get a little rowdy, please forgive me. I don't mean to offend anyone or sound like I'm preaching at you or speaking, you know, or, or trying to speak down towards you instead of speaking into your life. And so uh, please don't allow this to offend you. But I, I can get rowdy sometimes, you know, because I, I be really speaking from my heart. But I'm sure you all understand that anyway. And some of you probably like it. But anyway, uh, and I hope so. Most of you all do. But anyway, so I I begin to realize that how all these things that come at us, 
it puts a fence around us to say you can't get in or it's too late or it's too over. You might as well give up. You might as well throw in the towel. See, that's what the enemy is trying to do. He's fighting you. He's fighting us by saying it's no hope. It's no hope or, or, or when that wall has gotten so thick because we have allowed these negative things to come in instead of replacing them with what God said. It's going to add another layer over your mind until finally that, that mind is going to be so buried and so thick with a wall in, around it that you're going to say to yourself, that's right. It's over. And what is that going to do? Push you to want to go and now file for divorce or say it's over. You know, my husband has done this or my wife has done that. See, that's what the enemy wants. So the law said, don't. I've already given it over to you. And for some of you all that may have walked out on your marriage or may have divorced, it's not too late. It's not too late. The Bible tells us also in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 where Paul talks about how for some of you that have separated he says just remain single don't go out you know and get involved in any other relationships but be reconciled back to to your spouse you don't want this pattern where you you know getting yourself involved in relationships after relationships because we all know what the Bible tells us about that that'll be committing adultery as well so I want you all to keep that in mind don't fall in the same footsteps as your spouse. You remain faithful no matter what. And for some of you all that have done that, God is faithful and just to forgive you. He will forgive you for, for, for all unrighteousness, the Bible says. So let that be what gives you peace and encouragement. We all have done things that we know that we didn't know, but that's okay. God can fix it. You is able to work that out with your God and he's able to hear you and forgive you. So I'm not, I don't want to, you know, hurt anyone because we all been through it. We all are hurting here. We all are trying to be healed. And so I don't want to put no condemnation on anyone. Because the Bible says, therefore, now there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So as long as you walk after the spirit from now on, you do what God is calling you to do. There won't be any condemnation, nothing that will stand in the way between you and your God. So I just wanted to put that out there and I pray that this has encouraged you and picked you back up. And you can, there is always a second chance. OK, but don't give up on your marriage. Stay there because it is restored no matter what it looks like, no matter what the enemy is telling you. You know, he tried to get me to give up to run down there and file for divorce or do all these other things and give up and say all these things to my husband. He tried to get me to give up because what I heard and what the things, you know, I had been seeing. But the enemy was that's what he was doing. He was trying to put that wall up, put that thickness up to bring division and separation and get me to give up but God just kept telling me no I'm for marriages I hate divorce and God is not going to change his mind God would not change his mind y'all I know we want out of this you know I know we want out of this we want to give up and so that's why Paul says okay you can give up if you want but remember remain single because as long as your spouse is alive you're not free yet. You're not free. So for all of you all that, you know, are thinking about doing that, giving up, don't give up. Because you want to be in right standings. You want to receive all that God has for you. You don't want the enemy to put in your mind that it is too late. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Um, and so he also tells us, he says, that I've given it to you. And in verse 4, seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns. Now, we know 
Let, well, let me go on to verse 5. And when you hear the priest give one long blast on the ram's horns, have all the people shout as loud as they can, then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town. And so we all know that that's what happened. The walls did come down. But I want you all to pay attention to, to this one here in verse 4. When the Bible talks about the priests, the seven priests. Now, who is our priest? Our Lord the Bible says, who is now our high priest. And he is, he is as seven priests. He, he is, he is all of them in one. He's so powerful. He is our highest priest. He is like the seven all at one time for you. And he is the one that is going before you and by you being with him. And he's with you. That wall is coming down. The enemy will not be able to keep you out and neither will he better keep you from getting in to get what is yours you can stake your very life on it your priest who is the lord jesus christ the bible says your high priest it talks about it in hebrews he is your high priest he is the author and the finisher of your faith that wall is coming down. Those scales are coming off of you all's minds. The scales are being removed from your eyes. You are going to be able to see how the veil is being removed. Don't you give up. I don't care what it looks like. Don't you give the enemy no place. He could come with whatever he wants. But let me tell you, that wall will not get thick. If you keep the negative things out of your life, out of your mind, out of your system, out of your soul, because the Bible says that our eyes are the windows to our souls. What you see will get in your heart and your mind and it can affect you in your emotions, your will. It could hinder your faith. It can do all types of things. Get you. It can cause you to... Uh, walk in fear and doubt and unbelief and that's what i'm telling you see these things that i'm sharing with you all will keep you on top of what the enemy is trying to do to you these things i'm giving you is designed to give you eyes to see and ears to hear because as long as you are not hearing and seeing what the spirit of the lord is saying you cannot see your way out you cannot win the battle but there is a veil that the enemy puts on our minds and it talks about it in second corinthians chapter 3 verses 16 through 17 i want us to go there quickly the bible tells us but whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The moment we get our eyes off of what we are seeing, hearing, and believing that the enemy is coming against us with, and begin to turn our hearts to the Lord, the veil will be taken away from our minds. The enemy blinding us. He will blind you. If you begin to focus on these negative things, that wall is going to get thicker and thicker and begin to build up until finally you're going to say, it is no hope. It is no hope. And that is really the enemy's goal to get in your mind because he knows he can build those strongholds. He can put up that wall. To make you give up. Why? Why is he doing that? Because he's afraid. That's what the king of Jericho was. Uh, that was that that was why he was building that that wall so thick. Because he was afraid of the Israelites. He knew that was coming to take down the wall. They were terrified. You all know the story of about how the walls came down in Jericho, and that's what it was. It was out of fear. Because he saw that the Israelites had the power of God with them. He knew that God was working with them. All the nations around it, uh, that was around the children of Israel, heard, had heard about their God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
They knew. And so the enemy knows about your God. He is afraid of you. So his goal is to put the walls up so he can try to prove to you that you are defeated. And he don't want you to see that you have already been restored in your marriage or in any other promises God God's words shows us that he has given us. These things the Bible tells us are written so that we can know about them, so that we can know what God has done for us while we wait for them to come to, pa to pass. The Bible says in Romans 15, 4, they are designed to give you peace and patience while you wait for these things to come to pass because why? It is already done. The Lord told him, I've already given it to you. I've already given you the land. So don't tell yourself, oh, one day I'll get it or one day it might come. That 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 statement will keep you blind, making you feel like God hasn't heard you or that God is not going to do it. Or he may, you know, it'll keep you in that place where you you hoping, you know, you hoping you don't know. Maybe it'll happen or maybe it won't. It probably will. Or maybe it wasn't God's will. You know, that's what the enemy want to do. He wants to keep you right there in that place where you're constantly questioning. I wonder if God hearing me. But to those that finds out the truth that it is already done, they are the ones always get it. <laughs> they are the ones always get that breakthrough. That's how miracles come. Like I told you all in my uh, testimony video, those of you all that have not saw that video, I advise you to go to it because and check it out. Because in there, that's what I'm talking about. You have to see it that it is already done you know and that is how the mountain moves if you stay you know saying that if you stay feeling like that is not done already for you based off of what you're seeing the mountain can't move like that jesus said you have to believe that you have received it already and then you will have it and so this is why the enemy is trying to fight you in that area because he don't want you to see what you already have because that's how you receive it and the lord showed me how i already had it when i began to fast and pray during the time that i was standing fasting and praying is very powerful because what the fasting does it brings the flesh under and it causes you to come up under this place to where you are humbling yourself under the mighty hand of god and what he'll do is when you humble yourself he will lift you up, the Bible says. He'll raise you up and give you his vision. He'll give you the faith you need to move the mountain because you have submitted yourself unto him. Fasting and praying is very powerful because it is a love language unto God where you're saying, Lord, you are first. I place no other before you, not even my own flesh, because I can't do this without you. So fasting and praying is very powerful it is actually i'm telling you guys a love language where you're saying unto god you're god you're a lord you're mighty you're a king lord no one is greater but you so that's what fasting is really saying unto god for you and this is why god gives you his mind because remember the bible says we have the mind of christ well when you fast and pray not only will he give you the mind of christ but he will also give you his eyes and his heart so you could see. You could see from the eyes and the mind of God. And that's how you're able to outsmart your enemy. So fasting and praying is very powerful. One day I'm going to have to get into that uh, as well. But first of all, I want to move on and pick back up here in verse uh, 17. So remember that though, guys, that the veil will be taken away when we turn into the when we turn unto the lord now in verse 7 it says for the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom freedom and then it says so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the lord and the lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image so not only will you be changed into his glorious image but you will also receive the promises you will receive his life you will receive that marriage that he has you will receive that same image and likeness of christ 
Your life will become like his. Your life will begin to line up like his. Everything about you will begin to reflect his same image as you can see him. See, but as as long as your mind is filled with all this thickness around it, like the wall of Jericho, it puts a veil there. So now your life can become your life. Your life cannot become like his or you can't receive the promises being blinded. People of God or keep us from receiving the promises of God. And so this is why we can't let that veil be there. And I remember one of the standards asking, well, what all, you know, what all is the enemy hiding from us and not wanting us to see? This is it, guys. He don't want you to see what God has already done for you. That's a dangerous weapon to him. If you can see that you are already healed in your marriage or if you can see that everything in your life is already perfect. You just don't see it yet because the enemy has put the walls up around you, had them there for so long because all the negativity was coming in, piling these things up in your mind is what has blinded you. Well, it came from the enemy. So he made your spouse act up. He made your spouse retaliate and say all these mean evil things to you because he needed that that was going to put the wall up over your mind put the veil up bring the scales as many as he can get them thick over your eyes so you cannot see the glory of god because once that veil be taken away what's going to happen is it's going to bring freedom and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom so we can we have to turn our eyes upon Jesus. And remember the spirit of the Lord is the Lord and he brings freedom. He brings liberty and victory and his life becomes yours. Hallelujah. And all of his promises become yours and begin to invade your life. I don't care what you're going through. If you're having health problems, financial problems, whatever kind of crisis you're in, just I'm telling you, once the Lord comes in and you can see what all he has done for you already, you're going to have testimony after testimony and after testimony, because that's what happened with me. I used to be saying, Lord, bring my husband back. Oh, Lord, please deliver him out of this that he's in it. I, I, why? Because I, I couldn't see that it was already done. And the Lord began to show me, you don't have to beg. I've already paid the price for you. You're not some slave that has to bow down to me. The bread is for the children. You are my child. I love you. God the Father said also, if I didn't even spare my own son for you, won't I give you everything else I promise? The Bible tells us in Romans won't I give you all these other things these little simple things if I gave you my own son who I love if I didn't spare him for you because you're so precious to me why would I hold back your marriage I want your marriage healed I want you and your family happy I don't want to see y'all torn apart this affects the whole home this affects your children this brings discouragement to them I've called you all to raise up godly children I don't want your husband or your wife away from you this affects everything this hinders the plans and the purposes I have for your life if you all depressed and all beat down and discouraged, how can I get glory out of this? I sent my son to die for you all and, and reverse these things in your life. You think I'm, I'm out for you to fail? No, I'm just, the Lord is saying, I'm just, I just want you all to see that it is done. And I'm going to show you how to see. I'm going to show you how to pray how to fast and allow me to lead and guide you and you're gonna win this thing because i'm with you i'm your high priest the walls are coming down and you people of god you're gonna be so amazed when you when god can get show you this revelation this is why he say meditate on his word day and night why because this is how you'll make your own way prosperous and you will have great success no man he told joshua would be able to stand against you just got to be strong and don't let my words depart out of your mouth. Keep speaking them over your life. Why? So you can keep them in front of you. 
because the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and it is a light unto our path. So God's word is what's going to lead you through the darkness and allow you to continue seeing what the enemy don't want you to know or see. And so people of God, I pray that this has encouraged you. I, I want to get further in this, but I don't want to hold you up. I, I pray that I've covered so much uh, to answer your questions. And you all, like I said, you know, go back and look through these verses and allow them to speak to your heart. Allow God to show it to you and allow God to lead you. He'll guide you. He has it. He has given you these things already. I'm telling you, it's done. But you got to speak it out of your mouth. You got to declare these verses. You got to declare that my marriage is already healed. Lord, I thank you that the, that the divorce is, is canceled. I thank you, Lord God, that my husband is loving me as Christ loved the church. Or for you husbands who are standing for your wives. I thank you, Lord God, that my wife is submitted unto me. I thank you that she's allowing me to be her protector. She's allowing me to be her, her king. He, she's allowing me to be the head over her as Christ is the head of the church. You know, people of God, you got to declare these things. You got to get them in your heart and your mind and, and see them as being yours already. You're not waiting for this, for God to do these things. He's already done it. He said it is finished. When he died up on the cross, I reversed it. I reversed what Adam and Eve has brought into the world. I reversed that curse. The blessings are up on you. Just receive them is what he's asking. That's it. He says by faith, you can move the mountain if you only believe that you have received them already. Okay, people of God. And so, you know, I love you all and I want to go ahead on and pray. Father, we just thank you for what you are doing in our lives. Thank you. You are causing us to see. We thank you that you are removing the veil and the scales and the walls of Jericho's of Jericho is falling now. We thank you, Lord God, that we are bringing our spouses out. We thank you, Lord God, that the walls are torn down. The enemy cannot keep us out. And he cannot keep our spouses in. We thank you that you have given us the territory already. We thank you, Lord God, that the marriages are healed and restored already. We have already won the battle. And the mountain has been moved and thrown into the sea. Because you say it, just say it and it will obey us. And we speak it out of our mouths now in your precious name for your glory, Lord Jesus. May you get all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And the testimony reveals the truth to everyone else, oh God, who don't believe that the testimony will bring them out to as well. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we give you all the glory and all the honor, Father, for Jesus name's sake. Amen and amen. Amen, people of God. I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that this has got you going and running and strengthened in you. I pray that all is well in Jesus' name. Okay, I love you guys. Until next time.